Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford invites you to their Bible study free conference. Call every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. You can call 701-802-5485. It's access code 629-5500-POUND. Her ministry, the International Intercessory Covenant Prayer Ministry, prays for salvation, healing, and deliverance. Her book titled, The Church That Makes the Difference, will bless your hearts. Order your copy today, 323-717-0444. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Once again, here we are again on another wonderful, uh, powerful message that the Lord has for you today. Hallelujah. Praise God. I am Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford, and this is the authentic word. This, this is God's program. The Holy Spirit designed and planned everything that he wants to do in your life. And you know, you really got to trust him for that because he's God and he lives in you now. And so if you're born again and you know Jesus and you're learning to know him and getting to know him better and better and you and Jesus walk together, you're in agreement. And so wherever two walk together in agreement, a lot can get done. <laughs> Hallelujah. A lot can get done. We've been doing the series on the power of the tongue, the, the mouth, how valuable, how it's the most important tool that God has given us is our mouth and how we need to use our mouth and the power of that, what we say and how we say it and what it can bring. It can bring prosperity. It can bring joy and peace and love into our lives and through the love of Jesus because he, he gives us that. And so last time we were in the book of Romans and we was in chapter 10. Romans is in the New Testament. And so in Romans chapter 10, we just barely got through to two or three verses there. <laughs> and so we're going to go back and kind of try to pick up just a little bit of where uh, we left off at, but God is faithful, so he shall have his way. Hallelujah. <laughs> so let me pray for you real quickly. Father, open up their ears and eyes and mind in the name of Jesus for them to receive this most, uh, your amazing word and the power of your word and an understanding of how to apply and the revelation. And so I just thank you, Lord, for this privilege and this opportunity to once again to minister to the world, the word of God, the authentic word. So in your name we pray and we ask you to, to bless it and cause it to go forth in all its power and anointing than the glory of who you are. Yeah, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray, amen and amen. So now let's go back to Romans chapter 10, and now we're going to look at verse 9, um, just briefly. And it says, and if you shall confess with your mouth, here we go, the mouth, the power of the mouth, you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. Anybody who confessed that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the Savior, he is of Jesus. That person is born again. That person have received Jesus and all of who he is, all of that he came on the earth to be for us, to be an example for us of how to live and how to do it. And so he says here, 
and and so he we needed power and he said the power that i'm giving you is the holy spirit and he said that power that is going to work in you i can get a lot done through you because of my power that i put in you when you received me hallelujah wow and so part of that power is what you say it he said whatever you say it that's what you shall have whatever you believe it you shall receive it that's what you shall have and so when you believe this word when you believe this holy bible you are going to have what this holy bible say you can have and not only that but you will be what it says you can be yeah hallelujah praise god and so he said and shall believe in you your heart that God has raised, hey, that God has raised him from the dead, raised to Jesus Christ from the dead, raised the anointed one from the dead, raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So there's some of you that got saved last time. And look at verse 10, for with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, you became saved because of confession with your mouth because you believe that in your heart. Now, remember I said now how things come out of your heart. So that was in your heart, and that's why you said it. And so, and you believe that. You said it because you believe it, and that what was in your heart. Hallelujah. So, and, and he says, and so with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. So you receive righteousness. That's one of God's free gifts. He gives you righteousness. And so the righteousness that, that you receive by confessing him with your mouth, the power of your mouth. And he said, so whosoever believed on him shall not be ashamed. You're not going to ever be ashamed because God and all his goodness and all of his faithfulness, he would never, he would never allow that to happen. Why? Because he's faithful. He is totally, completely, totally faithful. And so he says, look at verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Look at that. So it doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or not, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile. He said there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord, the same Jesus, the same God, hallelujah, the same Lord, Ooh, over all is rich. Uh-oh, he's rich, so that makes you rich. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he said, is over all is rich unto what? All that call upon his name. You called upon his name. He, you rededicated yourself back to him. You, you called upon his name for him to save you. You called upon him for whatever it is you needed to call upon him. And right now, God is showing me that a woman had called upon him for her lungs to be healed. There's a spot on your lungs, and Jesus is telling me that he's healing you right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, that's awesome. See, so God hears our prayers. And not only our prayers, but he hears everything else we're saying too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anything that we're saying, God can hear it. He is the God of all things. All things are possible with God. He said there's nothing impossible to him. There's nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing that you could ask him for that he have limits on. See, we serve a God with no limits. Yeah, hallelujah. He doesn't have any limits. And the only way he is limited is by what we're saying with our mouth. And so if we ask just for a little, we'll get a little. <laughs> if we ask for more or for a lot, we'll get more. But this is what he said. He's able to do, and this is in Ephesians chapter 3. He says, I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you're asking. He said, I can go way beyond that, what you're asking me. That is nothing for me to do. It's so easy. I'm God, 
and there's nothing too hard for me. He said, I can exceed and go beyond and above it. And he said, so can your mouth. He said, what you speak, you can go beyond that and above that. And he said, far above, far above, exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly and above all that you could ask or think. What? So those seeds that you put in your thoughts, your thoughts are seeds. Those that go into your mind, which go into your heart, which come out of your mouth. Wow. He said, ask me for something impossible. Ask me for something big. Ask me for something. You asked me to save you. Oh, I did that miracle already. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now ask me for something else. And whatever you have need of, I am that. He said, that's one of his names. I am that I am. I can exceed that abundantly above and far above it. But you ask of thinking according to what? According to the power that's in you. What power? The Holy Spirit power that gave you the ability to become all you're supposed to be as a son and a daughter of God. Hey, yeah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't you understand the power of that? That is so amazing. That's so miraculous. See, so God has already done many, many miracles in you already to get you to this point where you are in your life right now. I got so many testimonies of the miracles that God has done in my life from before I even got born up to this moment right now, and you do too. We all have testimonies that will inspire, encourage, and build up and cause people to walk in their faith to do great things, great exploits for, for mankind, for humanity, for all of humanity. And so the power of your mouth when you pray, God will start moving and doing those things that you prayed against and those things you prayed for and those things that need to change and those things that need to continue. So there, God don't have any limits. The only limits are in our own minds and in our own thoughts. And so he wants to expand your mind by you reading his word. He will expand your understanding. He will expand your, your wisdom and knowledge and revelation. And when you ask him for wisdom, he said, I'll give it to you. Whatever you ask me in my name, I will do it because it glorifies his father in heaven. So you ask him, Lord, how, what shall I say? How shall I say it? And when you give it to him and let him do it, he will do it. And I tell you, people are going to be drawn to you. They're going to be asking you to do things. Why? Because you are speaking things that's going to cause them to prosper and have good success and good health. Don't you know that when you say things that are healthy, all of your bones and muscles and tissue, your hearts, your organs, they all will improve. They will all get better because of the power of words. Words are spirit. And so when that Holy Spirit word comes out of your mouth, it goes immediately into action to do what you say. Hey, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. See how amazing Jesus is and the Father. See the plans that they have for our life. They're so outrageously wonderful that some of us, can't even get to that place yet, but keep working on it. You will get there. Keep listening and letting uh, people that you hear preach and teach the word, make sure you look it up to and that you see it with your own eyes in the Bible, what is being spoken because sometimes we make errors and we don't speak it correctly. And so that's why we go to the scriptures. We go to the scriptures so that we can make sure that what we are saying is the correct thing. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we're going to start at verse 10. And here, God is talking to his people about them, the conditions of restoration and blessing. And see, that's what needs to happen in your life when you get born again. You need to be restored back to Jesus. You need to be restored back to the word. 
And so God, in all of his faithfulness, he says, you have to be taught again. And he said, I will be with you. I will help you be very courageous and, 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 and uh, be strong and very courageous. He said, because I am with you. And he is literally with you because now his spirit live in you. And so you know he's with you. You can't get away with nothing. He sees and hears everything. And he can be everywhere with everybody all at the same time. Now, how impossible is that? How amazing is that about God? I'm telling you, he is so amazing. He will just blow you away because your natural mind cannot comprehend that. How the God could be and hear everything you're saying and doing with every person on the planet. Hallelujah. Even little bitty babies, those who are helpless that can't take care of themselves and other people have to take care of them. Don't you know you wouldn't be here if someone hadn't done that for you? So how important is that for you to be connected to the Holy One, the Savior, your King? And how did you get that connection? With your mouth. Hallelujah. With your mouth. Now let's look at verse 10. And he said, if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. So now you got to do something else too. You got to hear the word because faith comes by hearing. And so you've got faith now. Why? Because faith was deposited in you with the Holy Ghost. Eh, yes. Hallelujah. So he said, when you hear the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of the law. What book of the law? This very book we're reading now. This book of the law. And so it's the book of the law and the prophets and, and of the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit from beginning to end. It's, it's one goal, one purpose. And that is for you to be with him for all eternity. So you get to decide if that's what you want or not. By the confession with the power of your mouth. Your tongue, your tongue. See, so, you know, that's so extremely important. And so he said, so to keep his commandments, statues, which are in the book of the law, and if you turn unto the Lord your God with all your heart. Now, see, now, remember now, you got to be careful what you're putting in your heart. And what you're hearing and seeing, what you're reading, what you, what you do, all of that's going in your heart. And so you're going to come out with something out of your mouth. See, so that can bring damage or that can bring, bring blessings. That can bring restoration or that can bring your fall. You can end up being defeated. You can end up being, uh, uh, having a serious fall. And so look at verse, uh, and so he said, if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, now, that's, that's also in the New Testament. It's in the New Testament. But see, we can only do it through his spirit. See, they were trying to do it through their own strength, through their own abilities, through their own gifts. No, you cannot walk with God doing things through your own strength and own ability. It's only through, you can, but you're not really walking with him when you do that. You're just walking with yourself and your own decisions that you made. But when you surrender and humble yourself to him and let him walk with you, because he will only do it if you want him to. God is not a God of trying to control you and manipulate you and force you to do things that you don't want to do, which is what some leaders like to do. And so we thank God uh, there are nations who live in democracy where people have the freedom to choose to make their own decisions about themselves. And so when that is not happening, there's something going wrong there. That should not be. And so because God has made you free now and you're free in him. And when you, when you're free in him, he gives you what he calls free will choice. He lets you choose when you're ready to confess him when you're ready to walk with him, when you're ready to humble yourself, because you can go against him, you can fight him, you can say, no, I'm not going to do that. God told me to do it. I don't care. I don't want to do it. I'm going to do this or that. And, and we do that sometimes. We've done it some, some of us have done it for years. 
when we even knew better, but we finally made a decision maybe today or some other day and said, okay, I'm coming back to you, Lord. I want to do what you want me to do. Now look at verse 11. For this commandment which I give to you this day, it is not hidden from you. It's not hidden from you. Neither is it far off. It's not no long way away somewhere up in heaven. No, it's right here, down here on the earth with us and presently with us right here and now. And what did he say? And it is not in heaven that you should say, well, who shall go up us for us to heaven? No, anybody got to go up to heaven for you. You can have your heaven right here on the earth. <laughs> You're now part of the kingdom of God. You're the walking, talking kingdom of God. So he said, no one has to go up there for you to heaven and to bring it unto us that we may hear it. No, you're hearing it now, and you can do it now. Do it, he says, and do it. No, there's no question mark about that. For neither is it beyond the sea where you should, shouldn't say, for who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Nobody got to go that far. It's nigh in your mouth. You don't have to go anywhere physically. You don't need to go any place. But in your spirit, what do you do? You go straight into the Holy Spirit with your mouth, with your heart, and you say it, and you say it. That's how you get it done, by saying it. That's the first action that you take after the thought. And then you say that thought. You speak it. You bring it to life when you use spirit words to bring it to life, when you speak it. And so look at verse 14, but the word is very nigh unto you. Didn't we read that in Romans 10? Yes, the word is very nigh unto you. In your mouth, in your mouth, you can't get no closer. That's it. That's as close as you can get to the word is in your mouth. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Oh, wow, what a miracle that is. Glory to God. You don't have to run over here and run over there, but you go places in order for that word to manifest what you spoke so you'll see the development and how you're growing in the word and how you're doing more because of that word that you spoke. Whoa, in your mouth and in your heart. There it is again. You can only speak it out of your mouth if it's in your heart. That you may do it. That you may do it. So you can do it. And he said, just do it. And what did, what did Mary, the mother of Jesus, say when they was at the wedding feast and they ran out of wine? And people think, well, Jesus didn't drink wine. Well, Jesus did drink wine. <laughs> and and when they had communion, he, he told them, this is my blood. This is my body that testify of the, the new covenant that I have with you. See, we've got a new covenant now. The old covenant in the Old Testament, that was the former covenant. But he said the latter covenant is a better covenant. Why? Because he lives on the inside of you. See, he wasn't living on the inside of them, he wasn't living on the inside yet. And that's why the nations began to want to build idols and all of this because they're trying to figure out how they can see God. But he would anoint them with his Holy Spirit. The power of God will come over them and they could get stuff done. And that still can happen even with him living inside of you and he'll give you that and he'll anoint you with that a power that will come over you too. Not only is he in you, which is the most fantastic mystery, the most wonderful miracle that could ever happen to any human being that has the ability to say, to make a confession with their mouth that they want Jesus to forgive them and cleanse them and wash them of their sins and become new creatures in him. And so... God and all his goodness, he, what does he say? So, but the word is very nigh unto you in your mouth and even in your heart that you may do it. 
Wow, 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 wow. Now, let's go back and we're going to look at, we're going to go back to Romans. So I just wanted to show you that in the old and the new, how it's still powerful, it's still the same. God doesn't change what he wants us to do. He wants us to take all this knowledge and information and prophecies and everything, because we've seen all the prophecies basically of the Old Testament already come to pass. So Jesus could come back at any time and he wants you to be ready so that you will not have to go to stand before him in judgment because you've already made your decision that you want to be with him for all eternity. You want to live a life, a glorious life, a, a life full of abundance, overflow of everything good and wonderful, which of course, most of all is his love and the price he paid for him to get your love back because he never stopped loving us. God, the Word, and God, the Father, they never stopped loving us. That's why they had this awesome plan to get us all back, only if we wanted it. And see, he let Adam and Eve choose to sin. He let them do that. He could have made them where they would never sin. He could have made them like that, but he chose to make them immortal. And, and still, if they didn't want that any longer, that they could step out of immortality and step into being mortal, having a shortened life, and even with as long as they did live. Now you read it, and you'll find out in Genesis that Adam and Eve probably lived as long as Adam did, but Adam lived to be, what, 900 and, uh, what, 69 years old or 900 and something. You look it up. And so it, it was a slow process for them to die because of the decision that they chose to make. And so some of us die sooner and some of us die earlier and, and you know, for different reasons. You know, we're in famines, we're in floods, we're in hurricanes, accidents, abuse, uh, murder, all kinds of things, sicknesses, all kinds of things kill people. But when you know God, you know where you're going to go. If you die suddenly or if you die over a long period of time. So God is faithful. And so we're not going to have time to get to this other scripture. However, but meditate on what I just said. Read that in Genesis about Adam and Eve's life. And so when they chose to eat off that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that shortened their life. They shortened it to being mortal now, and they were going to deteriorate, and they were going to end up dying. And for them, that was a permanent death. Why? Because they never repented. They never came back to God because if they had a, well, you know, they would be in heaven. And I've never heard anybody who went to heaven or anybody who testified about heaven or you know, some of the people they say they seen when they went to heaven. No one's ever said they seen Adam or Eve. Wow. So because of them, that's why Jesus had to come in the New Testament to save us. But what did all of the writers of the Old Testament? They prepared you for the truth that he was coming. And how did they do that? With their mouth. And what does a prophet do? He speaks a message from God with the mouth. The mouth is your powerful, most effective tool. And so be careful how you use it. And let the Holy Spirit guide and direct you in what you say. Hallelujah. So God bless you. I'll see you next time again. And don't forget my book, The Church That Makes the Difference. Because that is who you're becoming. You're becoming, when you walk with Jesus, the church that's going to make the difference. Hallelujah. God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you next time on The Authentic Word. Shalom, shalom.